The Alberta government is attempting to build a firewall against the federal government, tabling legislation allowing it to block new funding deals between Ottawa and Alberta municipalities and other organizations. Alberta Premier Daniel Smith pointed to housing agreements between the federal government and municipalities as problematic. But Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Ottawa is just doing what it takes to build more housing. We heard from a cavalcade of premiers saying, see, the federal government needs to step up more, needs to do more. It's trying to get out of the business of housing. The federal government needs to step up and fix this housing crisis that we've seen across the country. So we are. Provinces should be careful what they wish for. Alberta Premier Daniel Smith is here in Ottawa today, and she joins me now in the studio. Premier, it's good to see you again. Thanks Hi, for coming David. in. So the, the Prime Minister and his government have been under pressure to respond on affordability, to respond on housing, to respond on infrastructure, and now that they've started rolling out programs, you've responded with this legislation. How does that help Alberta cities and Albertans get ahead? Well, because we want all Alberta cities and all uh, municipalities to get ahead in the same way that uh, they know how to do cooperative federalism because they do it with Quebec. Back in November... They announced a $900 million housing accelerator agreement with Quebec. And in fact, in the announcement today, they affirmed that they're going to continue with that kind of cooperative approach with Quebec. They recognize that they have to do things differently in Quebec. And why? Because Quebec passed legislation saying you can't do a workaround. You have to work with us. You can't go directly to municipalities. So we're passing very similar legislation modeled after the Quebec model. So, so you want the Quebec treatment, but will you offer the Quebec commitment? Because in that $900 million housing accelerator announcement, Quebec matched the money dollar for dollar and they got a multiplier effect. The way they've been doing it with cities is just, it's federal money in return for zoning changes. Well, we do have $840 million that we're putting up for affordable housing already over the next three years to build 25,000 affordable housing units. And we're working our th way through the regulatory process to start finding ways to reduce red tape so that we can do some acceleration. We're putting forward dollars for transportation projects to open up new communities. Those are the kind of things that I, I think make sense. We want to be able to get these homes built fast. We need to. We're we're growing like a, like we never have before. But, but for decades now, federal governments have been doing deals directly with cities. You know, the gas tax transfer, direct cash transfers help with transit, for example. Why all of a sudden do you feel the need to put a, a barrier in the way of provincial approval in these agreements? Well, I look at it as an enhancement because uh, I can tell you what happened in our province is that on one day when they announced one deal for one city of $175 million, they flew to Br British Columbia and announced a $2 billion deal that would cover all municipalities. It's just simply not efficient for the federal government to have bilateral deals with all 350 of Alberta municipalities. So it's either going to be a bunch of red tape, a bunch of time, or there's going to be a lot of municipalities left out, and that's not fair. Not, not efficient for who? I mean, not it, efficient for the federal but, government. But relations with your government and the federal government are not good. We, so, so if they want to advance their agenda and feel they can talk to the mayors and get a deal more easily than, than dealing with your government, that's efficient for them, if I, not for I you. I disagree with the way you've characterized it. We okay. were able to have a, a, a health care deal with the federal government over 10 years, as well as for side deals where we could talk about the things that we shared in common. We have had uh, agreements when we fought forest fires. We have had agreements when it comes to investment in key infrastructure in our province from the private sector, Dow Chemical, uh, Heidelberg, uh, the, um, uh, uh, we've got air products. We have a whole pile of, of uh, ways that we're working together on an ITC for, uh, for investment in carbon capture utilization and storage. This is why it's so strange that with all of the different tables and working groups that we have, all the history that we have in working collaboratively, why they continue from time to time to make political announcements, announcing areas in our jurisdiction without doing any consultation whatsoever. It's got to stop. Okay. No, and that is a fair point, that you have worked well together mm -hmm. on a number of issues, but on, on other issues, it has been conflict uh, ridden, I, I, I think is a fair character. Well, there's, there's conflict when we're at odds on the policy outcome. And what we don't like seeing is that when, we sh when you're at odds on a policy outcome, then you should come together and try to find a solution. We're trying to get alignment on getting to a carbon neutral status by 2050. They want to accelerate it and they want to start uh, uh, legislating in areas that are simply not theirs to legislate in under the Constitution. And housing is another example. And let's not forget that one of the things that they want to achieve is net zero housing. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that they have 
talked about in doing so is not allowing homes to hook up to natural gas, phasing out uh, natural gas appliances. That's not on in our market. Well, if that's what they're trying to do with the workaround, we're not going to get let them do that. But, but let's zero in on housing because mm -hmm. you, you know you followed the political argument in this country for the past year. It's been there's a housing crisis in this country mm -hmm. because the federal government hasn't done enough, and now they've started to do a lot of things, and suddenly jurisdiction becomes a big thing when housing isn't their jurisdiction, but they were being pressured and demanded to take action. And the Prime Minister said today the Premier should be careful what they ask for. <laughs> are, you, are you having a hard time saying taking yes for an answer? Well, us? I would take a yes for an answer if they worked with us the way they did Quebec. They are not calling my housing minister and working collaboratively to come to a solution like they did with Quebec. And we're putting forward legislation where we say that's our expectation. And mm -hmm. we'll see how they respond to that. But I, I don't appreciate them making political decisions, pitting one community against together, another, pitting rural against urban, leaving out Many of our, our rapidly growing mid-sized communities leaving out our Indigenous partners. I don't think that's an acceptable way for the federal government to be engaging on this issue in our province. We, we spoke to the mayors of Calgary and Edmonton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your two biggest cities facing enormous housing challenges, as you well know, and they are very worried about this uh, for the uncertainty it creates. And, and in particular, uh, the statement your government made the other day that about 800 of the existing agreements are problematic in your view. Like, does that mean you're going to go back and try to change deals, not renew them, tear them up? Up. No, we've Where does made go? it pretty clear that this is on a go forward. And I, I think that uh, Calgary and, and Edmonton, you know, good for them that they've got the political connections that allow them to get one on one bilateral deals. But guess what? I have to be prepared to make sure that 350 other municipalities are being treated fairly. We have 24 mid sized cities that have been doubling and tripling in size. They need to have housing uh, support as well. And so I, I just don't think that having having the, the best lobbyist is the way that you should be uh, getting money from the federal but government. I, I, I think it should be fair. Sean Fraser did announce housing agreements with, with smaller municipalities uh, in Alberta. It wasn't just Edmonton and Calgary. I can't remember the precise number. I can tell you. It was, it was six. Seven. It was six. We're $13.6 million. So by my calculation, with $175 million to Edmonton, $238 million going to Calgary, and $13.6 million to go to six cities, I would say that we're probably one to two billion dollars behind where we are in other jurisdictions. And that's not fair. So even if they, if the federal government agrees to treat you the way they treat Quebec, mm -hmm. as you're insisting, and sit down and negotiate with you on these agreements, there are still conditions on the money they've put on the table. For example, the $6 billion uh, for municipal infrastructure uh, in, in this budget. The one billion for uh, urgent needs and then the five billion that can go to the provinces if they agree to certain zoning changes across their jurisdiction and if not it goes to the provinces. Are you willing to meet those conditions to, to have that be an agreement between the provincial government and the federal government, or where does that lie? Well, look, I mean, we'd have to negotiate. I know that Quebec often says, no, we don't want your conditions, but we will take your money, and they do often get agreements on that basis. I mean, so I, I guess what I object to is that they don't even begin the conversation in a matter of good faith, and they're continuing to interfere in provincial jurisdiction and uh, announce things that I, I think that uh, if you if you ask uh, uh, Calgarians right now about how they feel about the conditions that have been put on their cities, I mean, you've got the federal government essentially asking for a complete rewrite of the zoning regulations in Calgary and Edmonton as a condition for receiving money. I don't think it's a reasonable thing for the federal government to ask for it, quite frankly. But if the federal government, I mean, I'm sure if you, you were asked to put money into Calgary or Edmonton and, and you had specific policy objectives you had in mind, wouldn't you want to see conditions in order to get the money to achieve the policy goals you would have as a premier? Well, I guess we have to make sure that we're putting policy in place that matches the needs of what our residents are asking us for. And that's what I would say is the important thing, is that these are Ottawa priorities, and I don't think that they're being very respectful of what it is that the, the local environment needs or wants, and I think that that's a real problem. This is the reason why, under our Constitution, there are certain things that have been assigned to the provinces to be uh, to have a direct authority over, and it's because there are different mandates and different direction that each province needs to go in, and I think that needs to be respected. This doesn't seem like it's just going to be a Justin Trudeau problem, though. Pierre Polyev has, has put out that if, if municipalities don't meet housing targets, he's going to cut funding. Uh, from infrastructure transfers to them, that they have to hit targets he is setting or they're going to lose cash. How do you deal with Pierre Polyamorous? Well, look, I, I mean, I would hope that every federal leader would recognize that the Constitution matters and work with and through the provinces to be able to achieve shared outcomes. Look, we all share the desire to be able to ensure that more homes are being built, and there's lots of things that we can work on together to make sure that happens. Joint infrastructure projects, as well as increasing water, wastewater treatment uh, grants, increasing transportation grants, and also uh, working with developers to reduce red tape. I, I think that 
that if we can find a way to sit down together, find those things that we can agree on, that, that'll be far better to have the municipal, provincial, and federal governments working together. That's what that's what how our country is supposed to work. It's not just municipal governments covered by this legislation you're proposing, though. Mm -hmm. It's also universities. Mm -hmm. and, and I've seen a lot of concern in, in, from post-secondary researchers that this could give you a role, your government a role, the provincial government a role in the distribution of research grants from the, the, the trinational councils, the Medical Research Council and Shirk and Shirk. Is that what you're hoping to do here, or are those grants exempt from this sort of provincial involvement? Well, look, I want to have a review. I, I don't know how many grants are coming and for what purpose, and if uh, there's a need for us to use our own spending power to make sure that the broad range of, of research and opinion is taking place um, at universities so that there's a robust di dialogue, as there should be at universities, then maybe we have to use our own research grants to make sure that, 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 that we have that balance. I have been given enough indication that the federal government uses its power through researchers to only fund certain types of opinions, certain types of researchers, and I don't think that's fair either. I, don't, I think we need to be able to have a balance in our university if we're going to have a robust, free, and democratic discussion about all issues. But the National Research Councils are, are depoliticized, right? It's, it's a jury of academics or peer-reviewed, and they make the decisions through application on, on research grants going to university, and it's all posted publicly mm -hmm. so you can see what's there, but you, you don't you don't have confidence in that system? I, I have heard enough from some of our academics about how difficult it can be to be able to access some of that funding. So we just want to do a review and we want to just see if there's some way that we can make sure that we maintain the environment at universities, which there should be, which is that all people from all political perspectives are able to engage in a robust debate and have a robust research agenda. I, I, can, I can feel some researchers at the University of Calgary, the University of Alberta, and, and places in, in, in your province getting anxious with that because, you know, the universities have agreements straight with these granting agencies. It's meant to be independent to fund, you know, a, a research that is protected by academic independence. I mean, well, what look, kind of a role do you see there for you? I, you know, I, I guess if we, if we did truly have balance in universities, then we would see that we would have just as many conservative commentators and as we do liberal commentators. Out of our journalism schools, we'd see just as many conservative-minded journalists graduate as we mm. do progressive-minded uh, journalists graduate. We don't see that. And so that leaves me to be concerned that we're not fostering the kind of environment that allows for balance, because we need to have balance. If we're going to have ba a balanced discussion in the broader pub public sphere, it begins at the universities. I get that, but that would be an issue with campus culture, which is funded by provincial governments. This mm -hmm. is like medical research and scientific research and, 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 and humanities research that is not necessarily determining the makeup and composition of the people who you, work at a You know, I guess university. we'll see. That's why we're doing right. the review. We want to see uh, what kind of things are being funded. And if there are any areas that are, are problematic, we'll have to keep that in mind as uh, funding agreements are renewed. So, Premier, what if this leads mm -hmm. to a situation where it becomes completely untenable uh, with, with the federal government and this billions of dollars mm -hmm. that's on the table for infrastructure, they, they can't reach an agreement with you, you won't let it flow to the municipalities, and Albertans don't get their share of the money that's on the table to deal with these collective I, I problems. I don't anticipate that happening because we did have a good relationship on the discussion around a health care deal. Mm -hmm. And we do have a good discussion about how we can support a variety of different private sector projects. They seem to be able to manage with the restrictions that Quebec has placed on them. And I would say that uh, they shouldn't be engaging in asymmetric federalism. You can't have one particular way of dealing with one particular province and then, uh, and then shut another province out. So uh, we're just asking asking them to abide by the Constitution, abide by the spirit of the way in which our country is supposed to work, and we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm hopeful that it will actually start a new relationship with the federal government, and Albertans will get back at least a per capita share of what we're entitled to, because we are a substantial contributor to Confederation. We give more per capita to Confederation than we get back in federal programs and spending, and we just want to make sure that, uh, that, that there's some fairness in the way those dollars come back. So just as a final point, have you spoken to anyone from the federal government since you tabled this or while you've been in Ottawa? I know you're here for the Canada Strong and Free Conference, which I don't think the Liberal government attended. <laughs> have you had any contact with anybody? Look, from when I come to Ottawa, I always uh, put in a call to see if I can yeah. meet with ministers. I did want to meet this time with Mark Miller. Um, I always love to, to meet with uh, uh, Francois-Philippe Champagne. Um, I've, I've had a bit of a texting with him over the last couple of days, uh, but no, we, we didn't have a chance to meet with anyone. I think that this, uh, on Fridays, is when everyone gets sent home to their mm -hmm. constituencies, but next time I'm up. Okay. Premier Daniel Smith, always appreciate you taking yeah. the time. Thanks, Thanks for joining us.